Tracy. Hi, Mirka. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm just great. Thank you. That's good. Okay. Well, thank you for uh, finding the time to talk to me uh, today. I know it's busy and it's complicated all over the world. Uh, so I really appreciate that you were able to uh, connect with me today. Uh, we have the whole school leadership course coming up to Prague and I thought it might be a good idea to record a little conversation with you uh, to find out more about it, to tell people more about it and maybe to find out a little bit more about you and just to inspire, you know, to send out some inspiration yeah. out there. My story, my history um, goes way back. Uh, I was born at the end of World War II. So now you know how old I am. And <laughs> I grew up in Minnesota. I had um, a very uh, interesting childhood, which was out in the country in a beautiful area, not far from one of the training centers actually now. And, um, and I attended a one-room schoolhouse. So in many ways, it was um, first through sixth years. And in many ways, it was not unlike a Montessori environment. The pedagogy wasn't in place with the materials. Yeah. <laughs> but in many ways, there was uh, a link between um, the social ecology of that community mm -hmm. that I grew up with and, um, and also my own individual learning. So... In, a, in an essence, it was a kind of Montessori um, back in those days. Um, I later went on to college, um, St. Olaf College, which is a small private college with a Scandinavian background. Um, I had lived in Norway in high school. I was a foreign exchange student. So it was a natural to go to uh, St. Olaf because I spoke Norwegian by then. <laughs> so they had to let me in. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so um, uh, that was um, a great um, education and I, I majored in education. So I first came to Montessori in uh, my sophomore year in, in the School of Education my professor was working on his doctorate mm -hmm. and he was designing his thesis with respect to alternative forms of education and he um, suggested that i apply to do an independent study in london and then he was going to use all my research <laughs> for yeah. his which he did. Um, so um, my first exposure to Montessori was in the 60s at the Montessori, Maria Montessori Institute, MMI, in London. And that was, you know, part of my research. I was exploring a lot of different um, pedagogies, but that was what spoke to my heart. And um, so that was my first exposure to Montessori. That, that, so yeah. you had an inspired person in your life who inspired you to yes. um, step on this journey. And uh, so you're in London uh, studying at MMI. Uh, which training did you do, by the way? Well, I didn't do my training there because I oh, hadn't graduated okay. from college yet. Okay. But I was heavily involved in interviewing and learning about it. Well, I actually um, got married and we moved to the Cleveland area. And I started on the west side of Cleveland in a church basement opening my own school. Oh. And um, I, I did it with another woman. Uh, it was a tiny program, but it grew rapidly. Um, and I remember the, um, the minister of the church, I was in the kitchen one day and I overheard him talking to people saying, you know, they're like a camel. They're poking their nose into every tent. <laughs> and that was because we were kind of taking over the place. <laughs> <laughs> and so that was that was the beginning. Um, then my husband was transferred to another state in the south, 
and we moved there and there were no really strong early childhood programs. There was only daycare. And I began again to own my own school. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, people like Peter Davidson and others who have owned their school know the, the difficulties of that. And eventually we all went to nonprofit status and brought in a board and relieved ourselves of all that uh, terrible responsibility. Uh, when I look back on my taxes, you can see that I did not earn anything in those early years, <laughs> which was typical of all of us in, in uh, those days. Yeah. yeah. There, there are many things that uh, uh, people who establish and open Montessori schools that they share, you know, they walk the same journeys, right? Yes, it's, yes. it's, it's a, a, it's a huge and, uh, yeah. journey and sacrifice in many yeah. ways, yeah. So, and, and then, um, okay, so today I know you as a very powerful and inspiring, energetic Montessori leader. Okay, thank you. And uh, I'm, I'm really honored to even just know you <laughs> and even more honored to work with you. Uh, but uh, there's been a long journey between being a teacher and a founder of first and then second Montessori school to where you are. Do you want to share a little bit about what happened in between those years? How yes. You yes, I'm happy to because it, it really explains um, who I am today and why I have the expertise and the knowledge base that I have. Um, in the mid 80s um, in my school, it was growing and those were days when we didn't even have any admin way of um, getting together or support um, and i i did my best at managing a school i would call it managing <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, i began to experience that uh, there was arguments pedagogically among the staff. There were issues. Um, the, the community was out of sync a little bit. Um, and parents were getting to be more challenging. We had parents in the school who weren't um, uh, feeling comfortable in our school. And I honestly did not know how to deal with that. I didn't have the background or the expertise. I wasn't a leader and I didn't know the field of leadership. And uh, during that time, there was a terrible tragedy in our school. Uh, I've shared it many times. Um, a little boy was up to bat at baseball on a Sunday and he was uh, he was up, he was pitched the ball, and the ball he didn't hit the ball. The ball hit him in the heart, and it stopped his heart, and he instantly died. Mm -hmm. And I was at the school working, not very far away, because you're always working every weekend when you're running a school. <laughs> <laughs> and I got a phone call. And I raced to the hospital. He was brought in by helicopter, but this little boy was gone. Um, and so that evening, we all began to plan how to tell our community and what to do going forward. And that tragedy led to an enormous groundswell of professionals who came in and helped us, including a group of nuns, Catholic nuns who had trained with Elizabeth Kubler-Ross, the expert in grief. So we had so much help and I noticed that my community, the staff, the, the guides, the parents were um, lifted into uh, a new way of working together. Without really any effort, they were they were connected, they were in grief, but they were helping each other. 
And there came a day when I said to myself, could we be like this without a tragedy? And that was the day when I went to the mailbox, there was an invitation um, to um, Dr. Scott Peck, who is a famous psychiatrist, and he was running a clinic on how, um, how to uh, create the science of community. We, and so it was a five-day conference for executives. Um, I went to the retreat. I was the only educator. It was full of business leaders. And we learned the science of community building. Um, at the end of it, we had become so close that we decided to continue on. And as we continued on and met um, over 16 years, uh, that group of people guided me to programs that I could study. Um, in organizational development, all the methodologies for hosting gatherings, um, for leadership, and for studying the uh, theories of adult development. And so I began my, my journey. And I did that while I was leading my school and practicing and putting in place what I was learning. So I, I'm still continuing to learn. <laughs> I still go to things. Um, but that background over 35, 40 years was immense. And it allowed me to apply a great deal of knowledge to leading a school in a completely different way that is supportive. Yeah. It, well, it's, it's, that's a very powerful story. And uh, it, it's the, actually the first time I've never, you've never shared with me. So thank you. I, I didn't know um, that uh, this event took place. And you know, you kind of took my question away because I was going to ask you, what do you think that made you a leader? Or you know, how did you become a leader from being a manager? And um, this this question of uh, becoming of a leader from being a manager or being a founder of an organization really has been resonating with me recently. And I really hope that when the whole school leadership course takes place in Prague, that maybe some of my questions uh, about that will be answered. Where is the line? You know, what do we need uh, to man to manage well, but also yes. What do we need to lead well? Yes. Uh, do you would you would yeah. you share with us a little bit about what the course is? You know the whole, or maybe even mention about the institute. So you have established a whole school leadership yes. institute. Yes. So I can tell you a little bit about that. Um, when I um, left my school in Washington D.C., which I was there for 17 years. Um, and I so-called retired, but we never do retire, do we, <laughs> in Montessori? Um, I decided that I would design a course that would allow me to transfer all of these years of training and work and um, really allow people to have a much uh, deeper understanding of, of their work in school leadership. And so that course, I, I ran three um, private cohorts, um, mostly people in the US, a few from outside the US. And over three years, we did the six modules with three groups. Um, that is all certified by Loyola University, in Maryland. And then when they graduated, now they're off and doing all kinds of wonderful things. Um, and towards the end of that, three years, I was approached by two grant funders who said, we will fund you with grants um, in order to be able to establish uh, the legal nonprofit and build a board and get yourself um, set up and running as an institute. And so that has happened in the past year. And uh, last summer, we launched our first institute, Whole School Leadership Montessori training. If anyone wants to find out more uh, about options of you bringing the yes. course to their country, they can contact you. Do you have, is there a website people can check? Yes. So the website is 
all one word, wholeschoolleadership.org. Mm -hmm. Easy. <laughs> and, and the course is for people who are maybe managers now and want to become leaders. Yes. And I would say that it is, um, well, the course is divided up into three areas. So there's six modules. Mm -hmm. Each module is about a week, and then there's a great deal of study afterwards. So when you come back to the next module, you have spent a lot of time soaking in the work that you are making changes in and trying out and experimenting with, as well as the readings and the homework. And so the first two modules primarily focus on self, uh, because the leader has to build from the inside out. And um, a part of that has to do with understanding the work of the adult theorists. So a little bit about that is that Robert Keegan at Harvard and others um, started where Montessori left off in, in many years of research. And that research now provides us with the planes of adult development. And they are not stages, they are planes because they are psychological shifts and changes and transformations, just like the child. <laughs> it's amazing. I, I can't wait for the course to start in Pratt. So in two, you know, two and a half weeks, uh, uh, we're going to... Um, uh, dive deep into yes. work. Yes. Um, who are the people that should come to this course? You know, like open minded. Is there? I guess um, people who are yearning for the means to um, guide a Montessori school in this age of complexity and this age of high anxiety. And of course, now we're really in the middle of it with all that's happening with um, the coronavirus. But um, we are in the age of complexity. Our evolution has come to that as societies around the world. And, and so it's, um, it's not as simple as just um, do this or do that. <laughs> there, and there are wonderful ways to approach all of that including how to approach the emotional field of the community because there is one there is an emotional field mm -hmm. and knowing how to position oneself in relationship to that so that you guide um, there are things you manage but there are things that you guide in support of adults so that's not part of our Montessori training our focus is on the child but there are many adults in, in the environment, <laughs> including parents and, and staff and guides. And so we have to know how to um, advantage that work so that we build a strong community. Yeah. Well, I'm so happy um, you're doing this work. Uh, you just reminded me, I uh, got a text from somebody today in the morning who is a school leader in the U.S. and she said you know Mirka I just don't know what to do there's a situation at work and I just don't know what to do and I and it was related to her staff and it was really complicated and um, I I do think and this is part of the work that we do at Lead Montessori as well yes. uh, that, uh, Mont Montessori leaders be it school founders or principals or even people who run other Montessori programs and organizations Yes. Uh, are in real need of support they yes. because they at least the ones that i know they are people uh people supporters yes they, they are they are about others yeah and, uh, they give a lot and they need uh to be supported as well so yes. i i myself think there's this huge need out there uh and uh we're really thankful to you and uh, leadership institute I'm so grateful to have a chance to do this and you know it, it, it's easy to show up and just say well 
um, we all have to be a healthy community here. <laughs> but actually, you have to learn how to do that. There are methodologies that work beautifully to be able to do that. And, and that's what's such a gift, is to learn those methods and, and ways of, of, of gathering together in, uh, with a prepared environment for those adults to build that community. So people should be prepared to learn mentally and intellectually, but they also need to be prepared to work inside spiritually on, on their own. And maybe it's going to be also very powerful in yes. terms of the bonding in the group, I assume. There, oh, there definitely is. I, um, one, of, uh, one of the groups that's ongoing now that started last summer, we started at Post Oak in Houston with a wonderful um, group. Um, they're, they're from around the, the world, and um, they're on WhatsApp, <laughs> and they, they talk every day. <laughs> they're, they're so bonded, and so um, that, um, that ability to have people to reach out to and to, who know the same language, who are uh, working in this arena um, and, and understand what they share together, it's, um, it's really valuable. If you were here, I would give you a big hug, right? <laughs> Same here. <laughs> so, sending you a big cyber electronic hug, right Absolutely. there. Absolutely. <laughs>